Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Well done for getting in on time. <laughs> right, we're going to start off this morning with a talk by Heather, if I uh, can keep my microphone close enough to me, uh, M0 HMO, uh, working satellites on a budget. So in order to try to keep the time, with no further ado, Heather, <laughs> it's all yours. Thank you. So uh, this talk came about by um, sort of nephrous means when uh, we realised that almost everybody that came to talk to us when we were putting on a demonstration said, oh, I can't afford to do that. And we thought about it and we said, well, you don't actually have to spend any money. Um, most of us already have what we need. So um, I'm going to have a little bit of coverage of the basic problems that you have to overcome to work satellites. Um, and then we'll talk about the various satellites that are up there. Um, I'll talk a little bit about making an ASL rotator. Um, that's the, a limiting factor if you want to get into some of the more complicated things. And then we'll just talk about weather satellites. So generally, hopefully, there's something for everyone. So what are the challenges? Well, first of all, unlike most QSOs, uh, these things are moving, so you need to find out where they are, you need to find out when they're going to be there, you also need to be able to point your antenna at them, um, and you need to know what the Doppler shift is going to be, and that's the challenge for quite a few of these things, which is why almost everything we do on satellites requires a computer of some form. Um, so once you've got the uh, the details of where and when and uh, I'm going to cover some more detail of some of these things but uh, hopefully you can you can pick up an idea of of what's needed for each of these uh, these devices so um, in order to do uh, antennas for this you can either have an antenna that you can point in the right direction this sort of thing or you can have some form of omnidirectional antenna like this sort of thing um, and the advantage of these is that they see half a sphere, um, so you don't need to actually point them, uh, but they do have disadvantages as well. Uh, if you want to work some of the, uh, the satellites, particularly the geos, the geostationary ones, the ones that don't move, um, you're probably going to need a dish, but again, we'll come on to that. Um, Polarization, that's another one. Obviously, it's easy when something's fixed. Usually, it's horizontal or vertical. Uh, satellites tend to do circular as well. And, of course, they're up there, they're moving around. So what might be horizontal to you at one moment in time, five minutes later, it's moved, and now it's in a vertical. So that's another consideration. Uh, we mentioned Doppler. Uh, the weak signal stuff, uh, some of these things are a long way away, so you're going to need some form of antenna amplification um, for some of them. We'll talk about that. Uh, for the digital ones, you'll need to decode them. I guess everyone's familiar with the ideas of FT8. Well, it's all, the, all along those similar lines. You, you plug your audio into a computer and you get um, digital data processed into your, your computer. Um, some of them have higher bandwidth than normal radios, but not all of them. Um, and uh, of course, you'll need a radio. Um, those who've seen any of my other talks will know that I'm a, a great fan of these little uh, RTL SDRs. Um, I used to say £5 on eBay, now it's a little bit more like £15 on eBay. Um, and this one, which is just basically a bit better, um, it's uh, the same thing inside, but it's got a better frequency, or, or an oscillator, more stable oscillator. Um, and there... Well, they were £15. I don't know what they are now. They're probably a bit more than that. But uh, that's all you need for most of what I'm going to talk about here. Uh, one of those blue SDRs. Um, and the rest we can probably do uh, with homebrew. So the first thing is which ones are up there. Uh, a lot of what I do is through the AMSAT website. This is basically down the left-hand side there. You've got a list of all of the satellites which are currently doing interesting things and people are recording data and telling AMSAT that they've done that. 
So um, I, I, you probably can't read this. I can't either. You know, you've got telemetry only. You've got full up and down link, the dead ones, um, and so on. So all the blue ones, all the yellow ones are active satellites that you can go up and work. Um, so if you think, oh, I'll work SO50 today, quick check on here to see, well, has anyone received it today? If they have, then you know it's up and running and it's doing its thing and you stand a good chance of uh, talking to it. So I mentioned uh, how to find them. Well, finding them, there, there are many online <coughs> references. N2YO is one that I particularly favour, but you know, they're just do a search for them. Um, here I just said, um, went up to this most tracked. Um, find the satellite for me. I asked it for the ISS and it drew the picture. For those who aren't familiar with it, um, this is actually going around in a circle, but because of the map projection, it turns out to be a, a, this sort of wavy line thing. And you can see that the ISS is going to come up, it's going to go over Europe and then back over here through Asia and uh, so on. So uh, that circle is where you can receive it from. So if that circle is at any point going to go up here, so at some point it's, it'll be centred here, but there'll be a circle around it here where you can actually receive it. F so that's your, it's called the footprint, it's, it's, it's where you'll actually find it. So. As long as that footprint is going to be over your location, um, then you're, you're good to go. And uh, um, if you're working on a PC, this is David Taylor's program, the WX uh, Track. Does exactly the same thing, but it runs on your PC. It uses these things called Keplers. Keplers are basically just bits of information that say how the program will find where the satellite is. Um, they're quite maths intensive but for our purposes we just have to know they exist and we have to get the latest ones so when you run, run this program it says shall I get the latest you say yes and it does the rest for you so um, it's uh, it's no effort and then it will give you this nice pretty picture again that's the ISS in the middle there and this is quite key to a lot of things this is its WX track setup and in order to get the tracking information, which we're going to use for the Doppler, uh, it needs to give that information out. It does it um, for those blue uh, and silver SDRs. You use this guy, the DDE and DDE client, and that you've got a plug-in in things like SDR Sharp. Uh, is everyone familiar with SDR Sharp, um, which is the program to talk about? So that's the way to get the information across into SDR Sharp. And then you say, right, start tracking, and you'll see those frequencies gradually shifting down over time as, as the, um, the, the, the satellite goes overhead and the Doppler changes. And you've got a little bit more to fill in here, and it'll, it'll automatically set up the right modes and so on. So uh, that's actually one of the weather satellites, 137. So um, let's have a look at the, the, the one that's probably the most familiar to people, which is the, the FM transponder type. So here you go up on one band, usually two, uh, two or 70, and you come down on the other one, 70 or two. There are a few variations. Um, and it's basically, it just acts like a repeater. Um, now, how to get onto it? Well, um, I use one of these my Yesu handy. I'm told it can be done with a Baofeng. Um, so pretty much everyone should have something along the lines of... <laughs> do you not think so? No? Okay. Okay. Well, it, I got five and nine each way on, on my Yesu, so uh, um, with, with that antenna, which we'll look at in a minute. Um, the... Um, the antennas, you can go and buy these elk arrow type things. Arrows are currently on eBay at £120. They look wonderful. They work fairly well. If you talk to Kent Britton, he might not quite agree with that. But, um, uh, but you can make your own. And um, that's what this guy is. Um, so 
it's a bit of wood. <laughs> it's uh, this is actually welding rod, but it could be uh, any bit of um, coat hanger. This is, I think, coat hanger, and um, these are just some other bits of uh, wire that I had around, and a couple of bits of wire, a couple of capacitors, and you've made your uh, your duplexer, and the end goes into the handy. My uh, invention here, if you can call it that, mostly they have a handle about here and you hold it and you point it at the sky. Um, because it's not the lightest thing and you might be holding it for half an hour, I made it a bit longer so I can wedge it on my hip and then I can just hold it like that. And then handy in the other hand, you're talking on your handy, you're moving the antenna around and it's very, very easy and it costs, well, I don't know, those two capacitors probably about 2p. Um, and as someone pointed out, I actually have a commercial <laughs> SMA on the end of it, but there we go. So it really is that easy. Um, I started in the morning, I made the antenna, um, I followed some AMSAT recommendations about how to program it, and um, that afternoon I got it tuned up. I've got a VNA, so I just checked it all, and it was all pretty good to start with. A little bit weak on 70, pretty much 1.1 1, 1 .1 on, uh, on 2 meters. And uh, I, I listened to some satellites, and then the next day I actually worked my first satellite, and I got 5 and 9 both ways. So it can be done, and it can be done quite easily. Um, the, uh, yeah, how to work them, it, it's worth noting that you don't get long, 10 minutes maybe for, for the, the whole pass. And um, so the trick is... For you, when you're starting out, to program up the handy with the Doppler corrections because you've not got a computer involved here. So um, basically, you, you you work out where it's going to be. Those programs will tell you where it's going to come up, where it's going to set, and how high it's going to be in the middle. So you can look at the sky and say, okay, well, it comes up near that tree, it sets near that house, and it's going to be this high in the middle. And you know it's going to take 10 minutes. So you've got your watch, you're looking at it, you're pointing it, where it's going to come over the horizon. It comes over. You might need to turn it because of that um, polarization problem um, that satellite's moving. You get When you get there, you'll probably hear someone call CQ pretty quickly. Um, as soon as they do, you can go back to them. And then once you come off them, you need to find them again. They're probably still there, but they will have moved and the polarization may have changed. So you're, you're talking to them and then you're moving a bit correcting, moving a bit, and then you have your QSO. QSOs aren't long-winded things. You're not going to talk about the weather or your uh, meals on wheels. You're going to talk, say, call signs and say hello and uh, locators, and, and that's it. And usually it's only the four digits of locators. Um, but it's great fun. It's a real challenge to get to the first point, but you can do it for free. Uh, well, if you've got a handy. <laughs> so... Um, this is straight off the AMSAT website, how to tune your uh, radio. So um, this, this is uh, for SO50. Basically, they're saying um, you go up on one frequency you, and then you Doppler correct on the other side. Um, it's got a C CTCSS tone, same as most repeaters. And uh, basically, you start at one point, the high, the high frequency. It's, it's coming towards you, so Doppler shift is make, makes it higher frequency and then as you move round you're going to click it down through the different uh, memories until you get to the bottom where it, it's near the horizon. For my QSO I only used two um, because it was very quick, my first QSO, um, very quick out there I only went through about that angle with the antenna and then he said goodbye and he was off onto the next one. So. As I said, very easy, good fun, and you can do it almost for free. Um, if you've got um, a white stick, two-band white stick on the roof, you can use that. It's not quite as good because of the polarization and the movement thing. It's a bit trickier. But again, for, for you want to try it, give it a go. Uh, you've probably got what you need to, to have to do it. Okay, so... When anyone thinks of satellites, the ISS is what most people think of. Uh, the ISS does a lot of different radio things. The key ones for our point of view, um, for those who are interested in APRS, it has an APRS um, or transponder, repeater, whatever they're called, 
Um, and you can get various bits of software. We'll have a quick look at some of that. There is FM voice. Some people are lucky enough to actually work the ISS in the same way that we've just uh, discussed. Uh, but mostly, you're going to be listening to the ISS making a school's contact or something like that. Um, and occasionally, they do SSTV, which is my first uh, source of interest in the ISS. Um, and they send down various pictures. Mostly, it has to be admitted, the Russians send down pictures. But uh, it's great fun. And uh, again, we'll, we'll have a quick look at the sort of things you need to do that. For doing all of my ISS stuff, I've used my just white stick collinear sitting on the chimney on the roof. Um, works fine. Uh, as you probably know, um, you've got a vertical, you have a donut shaped radiation pattern, which means that if it goes dead overhead, you lose it. But very rarely, and particularly the ISS, only gets to 51 degrees. So unless you're right down on the south coast, it never goes overhead. So you actually always get quite a good signal with the, uh, with the white stick. Um, and for the SSTV stuff, again, a handy. Um, you need to decode the SSTV, as you, you're probably familiar. Um, I've seen it done with a normal handy, uh, an Android phone, just hold the microphone to the speaker, and you get pictures. Uh, it's that easy, and everyone here, I'm sure, has got a phone. Um, and again, if you, you use your handy, or you can use a white stick, and you're up there getting these pictures um, down. The RTL SDR, again, it works fine. You can get the APRS stuff. That's what I uh, used for that. And I mentioned the handy, and obviously anything else, better radios. Um, any radio that can do um, the standard SSB type stuff will, will do the job. Um, if you want to decode it, RPI, I don't know what the, the pie costs these days, 30, 40 pounds. Um, it's, uh, it's QSS TV is a good little program. Um, PC, there are loads of things. I use this uh, APS, RS, I, whatever. Um, that long word there. Sorry? The long word. The, the, yeah, APRS IS32. Yes, um, that does, does a great job. We'll, we'll take a quick look at something there. And I use uh, MMSS TV, but there are loads of them. I'm sure everyone's familiar with how to find those. And um, I use Robot 36 on my Android phone. Um, so yeah, it, 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 uh, it, it can work quite well. Um, there's this uh, APRSIS32 program running. Um, it's uh, giving me some things. It's locators. It's come from the ISS. Um, and uh, you, you, can, you can actually track all the, uh, the messages going backwards and forwards. Not sure whether it's ever going to be particularly useful to do it, but it's, you know, it's another thing. It's a thing to get data from. There we are. Um, silver RTL SDR with my collinear on the roof. Um, you can get some pretty good quality pictures. That was from uh, 2017, as it says. And uh, if you work um, more, I think there were six pictures or six out of 12, I think, um, you can go to Aris, Aris and uh, they will uh, send you a certificate to say you've worked them all. So there's something there for the, the certificate chasers as well, um, which is quite fun, I think. Um, OK, so the other big one um, is S-Hail. Geostationary synchronous orbit means it doesn't move in the sky. It's a little bit harder to, uh, to do because it comes down on 10 gig, which is your standard sky um, TV type frequency. Um, so what does it do? Well, you go up to it on 2.4 gig, and it comes down on 10 gig, exactly the same way as the 70 and 2 meters, only you're just up in the gigahertz. Um, it's uh, because it's what they call a bent pipe, i.e. The, 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 it goes up and then comes out at another frequency, whatever you send up. You can have multiple channels. Um, so you need to find out where people are currently working. Fortunately, some of the great people at the BATC have created um, a, uh, a couple of um, these two things, the um, web SDRs, and they will tell you, show you the band plan of what's going on. We'll take a 
quick look at that in a minute. Um, 10 gig, obviously, you're going to need a dish. So um, downstairs, John has got set up a rusty, and I mean rusty, um, old satellite dish. Works absolutely fine. And for receiver, um, standard satellite LMB, any old one will do for SSB. And uh, the trick to doing this kind of thing on SSB receive is um, is to get the software right. So we'll we'll have a quick look at this. But uh, this is this wideband SDR. So wideband obviously is for TV applications. Um, the uh, this is the well the the main beacon which is just transmitting that. Probably everybody's seen the pictures of the uh, um, the uh, Qatari Arab dress guy saying, "Hey, we're putting up this satellite," and then um, that's just a looped. Um, TV uh, signal and these are all actual people on there and then there's also this uh, chat room where you can see who's doing what and what settings you need for for doing that and there's something similar for the, the um, narrowband voice mode as well so um, so as I mentioned rusty old sky dish it can be done with just a, a horn antenna and I'm sure um, if you're in the right place at the right time, just pointing the uh, an LMB without a dish will work as well. Um, LMBs, you can pick them up for a couple of quid at most uh, rallies these days. Uh, if not, you've probably got a Sky satellite dish you can probably raid for the purpose. It's a bit tricky to point it. You're going to have to play with it for a bit, see where, you, have a look at the waterfall, see when you can see the sort of thing that you expect, the beacons or whatever. Um, but it's it's a fun sort of afternoon as long as it's not raining and once the dish is pointing there you lock it off it's done because it doesn't move um, to receive it well the RTL SDR narrowband receive brilliant works fine and of course because you're going to transmit on a completely different frequency um, that's all you need um, get that set up it's receiving once you see the the waterfall with the beacons you are receiving the signals However, because these LMBs aren't very stable, um, a good piece of software is this thing called SDR Console. And the wonderful thing about that is you can tell it where the beacon is. There's a full-time transmitting beacon. And it will lock the frequencies so that as the beacon frequency moves, whether it's because of the space end or because of that LMB is moving, um, as it moves, it will follow the signal and therefore your SSB signal it will jump a little bit you'll hear people going a little bit louder as well a little bit higher a little bit lower frequency but if you can still work SSB um, on that will listen to the SSB and hear what people are saying um, so that's why you can get away with a low quality LMB if you go for a high quality LMB then you can go for much easier solutions uh, the, the um, blue or Silver SDRs work fine. In fact, you, you can get intelligible speech out of them anyway. But uh, that, that's where I'd advise going for 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 the really cheap LMBs. And of course, you can spend lots of money and get locked LMBs and all the rest of it if you want to go that that route. Receiving television pictures a little bit more complicated. You need to have a, a TV receiver from the BATC. I think you can build them up for about 50, 60 pounds now. Uh, they come as kits. They're quite easy kits to make. And if you want to see how they work, they're downstairs. Uh, BATC have got them all running down there. Um, very easy to do. And the BATC and the community around them are incredibly helpful. So if you just you know, get on their website, chat to people, you'll, you'll get on there. And for that, it's as easy as just plug the coax from your LMB into the mini tuner, mini tuner into your PC or your Raspberry Pi, loads of free software, mini tuner software for uh, PC, and of course the ports down from BATC. Again, it's all free software, none of this software that I've talked about, um, that they'll all take donations and you can register with some of them and pay some money, but um, basically they're, they're available free for you for you to, to play with. Oh, one other thing, you're going to need. Um, a bias T because you have to put a voltage up to enable the uh, LMB to 
to know what frequency and band it's, it's supposed to be working on. Um, BATC do a £3.50 PCB, again, a few components you need to add to it. But um, that, a cheap LMB, and uh, a bit of software, free software on your PC, and you're listening to a geosynchronous satellite. How far away is it? Somebody tell me. 22,000 miles. 22,000 miles, there you go. So that's a serious DX, right? Um, right, transmitting, it's harder, okay? You've got to go up on 2.4 gig, and you've got to have a little bit of power. Um, this thing, the potty, a wonderful invention. Um, I think it won the RSGB construction competition um, three years ago. A um, couple of plates, an SMA, soldered through. You can buy them. Plenty of places on, on the web will uh, sell them. Copper water pipe. You need to have a decent soldering iron to solder the stuff together. And then you take the innards out of your LMB, which is what this is, and you just shove it in the end of the pipe. Um, and it works, works fine. And uh, there's another one with a different LMB, but again, they all shove into the end. Some of these things have a cone on the end of them, uh, which you need to either cut off, or if you can, the pipe will go in between the cone and just into the middle. So very easy to make, a little bit, little bit more tricky, a little bit more expense, but again, we're talking 20, 40, 50 quid. We're not talking hundreds um, to get on air with the transmit side. Um, if you've got one, a Pluto or a Lime or any other SDR that can handle 2.4, 2.5 gigahertz. Oops, sorry. <laughs> um, and uh, again, uh, Raspberry Pi, Colin has created the thing called the Langstone, which uh, basically gives you everything you need to transmit on that uh, frequency. SDR console, again, it's a transmitter as well as receiving soft SDR. So if you've got a Lime or something like that, you, you can connect up and it'll do the job for you. Um, amplifier, you need a bit of power. The limes and the Plutos giving milliwatts. You're going to need a watt or so. Um, I think you know, there are some people who've managed to get on much lower power, but um, these guys, the Wi-Fi amplifiers, very, very simple solution. Um, there's one. Uh, they may need a little bit of modifying, but they're available for... 30, 40 quid or something like that. Um, just standard Wi-Fi amplifier. Again, go and have a look at the BATC or uh, AMSAT people. They'll tell you how to get these things modified up. Uh, basically, it'll work out of the box, but you want to get it permanently transmit, not receive, because then it's putting power into your transmit port of your SDR. The other thing you can do is you can make an up converter. Um, again, the BATC uh, can help with that. Um, the, I, I think it's again 20 or 30 pounds for an up converter 70 SEMs up to 2.4 gig into one of these guys maybe with a bit of tweaking and fiddling but it's doable and you can then be talking having QSOs on a 22,000 mile satellite um, okay so once you've done voice stuff and you've done some pictures and you've looked at moving pictures, TV pictures on SHL. The other ones that I find the most interesting are these, um, these telemetry satellites. So this is where AMSAT has really scored. I think there are seven or eight AMSAT telemetry packages have gone up there. And the, the famous, I hope, uh, FunCube 1, which is still up there, still transmitting. Um, it does the voice things, but it more importantly, I think it does the uh, these telemetry things, and it sends you down useful science about what's going on with the satellite. Um, Naif is still up there working. Uh, there was JY1Sat, which I think the tr the digital side of it stopped. Uh, Fox 1A, I think. Still working. Sorry. The transponder. On yeah. JY1 is still working. Oh, okay. Yep. Uh, and Fox 1A is up there. That's uh, Amsat America. Um, again, white stick is fine for this. Um, most of what I've done uh, has been with my white stick. Blue or silver SDRs. Now, when you get the software down, it's going to come down into your PC, uh, sorry, into your sound card or whatever, into your PC. 
first thing you need to do is move that audio into um, the programs that are going to do the decoding. So similar if you've played with SSTV on a computer, um, you've got the audio, somehow you need to tell the SSTV program where that audio is. So if it's just coming in through an audio port, that's easy, you just say it's my sound card and you're done. If it's coming in from an SDR, you need to link it with some sort of virtual audio cable. Um, again, they're free, they're, they're available, there's, there's um, a couple of really, really nice ones around. Um, so you get that set up, you get your audio cable set up, and then you're going to put the data into something. Funcube and Naif1 both have dashboards which you can get from, from this place. Um, and the dashboard is basically just a decoder. It takes in the audio, decodes it into real information, and prints it out. And uh, so um, the other good thing, of course, is that once it's got it, it shows it to you on the screen, but it also sends it back to the central warehouse, which collects all the received reports from all over the world any time of day or night. And there's a huge database now of all this data that's being collected as the thing goes round and round. And there's, there's some interesting science to do there if people are interested. Um, for the uh, Fox, there's this thing called Fox Telem, very similar. They all work on basically the same principle. Um, that they're decoding the audio uh, that's coming out of the SDRs and turning it into useful data. On Linux, as of yesterday, um, GR Satellites will do the job for you. Um, it has plugins for uh, the, um, uh, the Funcube and uh, you can decode most of the digital satellites. There are lots and lots of these guys, um, hundreds in fact, um, and they're up there, they're doing stuff. Some of them, like Funcube, are very well documented, very easy to do. Some, like the Chinese ones, are a little harder, but you can do it. And the Japanese are getting quite good at documenting their, one, their stuff as well. So, uh, and particularly now, as you're probably aware, there's a lot of missions going up to the moon and people considering going to Mars as well. And for some of their, their data, you can actually go and find them, see them, and I'm sure there will be amateur options for decoding them as well. So uh, it's an exciting time for this kind of uh, kind of setup. These, I don't know if everyone's familiar with CubeSats. They're uh, 100 by 100, 100 cubes. Um, that's FunCube. This is Naif. They basically look identical. Um, and they just go up there, do their thing, charge with the solar panels, got antennas. Again, they're spinning, so it's a bit harder to... Uh, know where they're going to go if you're going to use something like that, but the white stick does the job and it's as omnidirectional as you need to be. Um, that's, I think that's the Fox uh, dashboard, so you're getting this sort of signal in, it's doing some clever things with uh, processing it and when you get that kind of picture you know it's got locked, it's, it's decoding the data. and. Um, there's, that's, uh, which one's that? Is that JY1SAT? Um, so that's the kind of thing you get. It's telling you that the uh, uh, the radio board is doing whatever it's doing here. And interesting science, but the, the really interesting part of it is that it's sent back up to the, uh, the dashboard somewhere on a server, and that is being recorded by anybody who receives it. So uh, that's a, a useful thing. And uh, that's not such a good picture, but that's, uh, that's one of the fun cube ones. Um, so you can see the batteries charging and whatever and what temperature and lots of interesting things. And um, yeah, you, you can see the green bar here saying it's got locked. It's doing everything for you, basically. You, do, you need to do a little bit of tweaking around with the software, but these dashboards are, are, are a godsend for starting out because they just do everything for you. And uh, once you've had a, a QSO with your, uh, your Fungube, um, you can get a certificate of achievement for saying, hey, we put some data up and we contributed to the uh, citizen science. And you can even get yourself <laughs> with an Ethernet adapter. 
virtual com port pair we'll talk about that in a moment and some custom software and uh, yeah you, you, can, you can get this thing to work so that's the RAM I was talking about basically the um, the end of it here comes out by eight inches I don't know that, that thing's about this size in in reality um, and uh, you just mount it so that your dish is on a pivot, your RAM is here, and it moves the dish through 90 degrees, and you just need to get the geometry right. And of course, if you've got a 90 degree movement elevation, and you turn the dish through 180 degrees, you've got the other 90 degrees. So with that, you can get and a 360 degree normal rotator, azimuth rotator, you can get the complete um, sky covered. And these things are just about fast enough. Um, you, you um, obviously some of these fast moving satellites they're going to go over the sky in ten minutes, um, but these these will do. These these will do it, and they'll move some seriously heavy loads. So you can get your your big dishes, uh, particularly if you've got counterweights and things like that. Um, there it is. That's my uh, Arduino and one of these. Um, I forget. Uh, I think that's a Wisnet chip in there. They're, they're available, they're not, uh, that's about five pounds. You can get similar for the Pi Zero and the Pi Pico. Um, so the computing side of it, we're talking 15 pounds-ish um, to get it all working. And that gives you an Ethernet controlled rotator. So most of the software we've talked about expects to see your rotator on a COM port, on a serial port. So you can buy or you can I think you can get them for free. Yes, you can. Um, what's called a virtual COM port pair, which is a bit of software that just say, creates a virtual COM port, say COM port 10, and another one, COM port 11, and all it does is it's in software, it creates a link between the two. So you, you transmit out to one, it creates a link to the other one, and vice versa. So you just tell your... Um, your WX track, whatever tracking program you're going to use, to that your Yesu rotator is on um, COM port 10, and then you need a bit of program that I've written, it's open source, that will take what comes out of COM port 11 and put it out on the Ethernet, and then this guy will then receive it on the Ethernet and turn it into control, serial control at the other end. So this will double as a complete remote station control because obviously it's ethernet but it also you can then add whatever you like including these sort of stepper motor kind of rotators so that's the uh, gearbox and the stepper motor the gearbox is about this size and um, it's incredibly powerful I mean I don't know if you're familiar with the figures but it, it, it would the motor itself would lift me at a meter off the floor and when you've got a 100 to 1 gearbox in there, it'll, it'll turn your car rather than the dish on top of it. And uh, that comes with a controller, um, which is about that size in reality. And this has a lot of, this particular controller is, is a little bit more expensive, but it has, it, it can't miss steps. So if you tell it to make a step, it will always do it. Whereas some things will, uh, will, will the cheaper ones won't guarantee that they do that. This was designed, I think, for a lathe or a milling machine. Um, but this solution will turn, I say, it's incredibly powerful, it'll turn anything. Um, we worked it out that for our uh, HF beams, we could probably go round in two seconds, um, which will mean you'll have S-shaped um, elements. Um, <laughs> But I wouldn't advise that. But we, yeah, because we're we're in control of the software here, we can do what we like. We can accelerate it, decelerate it, and so on. Okay, so let's have a the, the one that's visually most exciting. I think um, what's up there? Weather satellites. There's the NOAA ones. They simply they go overhead and they just keep taking pictures one at one at a time of a one-dimensional picture and they just do it all the way around so you receive them for a while you just keep building up pictures of lines and eventually you've got a picture of the earth that was underneath the satellite um, there's also the meteor which is something similar but it's much higher res um, 
it's full color, whereas the no is a, a false color. We'll look at that in a minute. Um, and those are very easy to do. Um, and that's what I tend to demonstrate when I'm out and about. Uh, antennas, well, you can just get a bit of a coat hanger, bend it a bit, make a V, put it up running roughly north-south, and it will work. And we'll see some results from that. The white stick again, my famous white stick, it works wonderfully well. Um, but remember I said about the donut, if the satellite goes overhead, you do get a little drop out right over the top of your house. Um, turnstiles, we'll look at a picture of one of those, and the QFH. Here's a QFH made by John Harris at the back there. When you were 14, John? Yeah. yeah. Um, so bits of central heating pipe, a bit of coax. This is a old 35 mil film canister, if anybody ever remembers those, um, just to, to do the ballon. There are plenty of uh, places online that will tell you how to make one. It does require that you, uh, you can bend some bits of uh, um, heating pipe and um, solder on some uh, right angle connect <coughs> bends, but very easy to do um, if you're creatively minded. If not, go for the white stick um, or, uh, or equivalent. Incidentally, you can make a white stick yourself, um, collinear antenna, get the right lengths of coax, and you just connect the outer at one end to the inner of the other and swap it over, and you can make as many elements as you want. Um, it's, uh, there, there are, again, there, there are guides online to doing it, but as long as you've got the right bit of coax and you know enough about its velocity factor and so on, that you can make them quite easily, and they'll certainly be good enough for this kind of thing. So these pictures are coming down. You've got to decode them. Um, the uh, Raspberry Pi, there's this suite of programs called uh, the Raspberry Noah V2. Uh, works very well. Get, it's fully automated. You can set it up and just say, take some pictures over the next week and come back and you just see them all there. Um, it's, uh, or obviously you can set it up and say, I want this one now, go and see the pictures and so on. Uh, I, on the PC, I use this uh, WX2IMG, which works really well. It's, um, I'm not sure who it is that originally wrote it, but it went through a phase where it wasn't supported anymore. And then it came back again. People have put it on websites and they called it the restored version. Um, so, uh, yeah, you want to be a little bit careful, make sure you're not, uh, not getting, uh, or, or you're getting the right thing anyway. But that, that one works. We mentioned the audio cable uh, software again. That's essential in this case because you've got to get the audio out of your SDR. It's FM, but it, you've got to get it out of there into your um, into your decoding program. Um, I use SDR Sharp for this, and the DDE tracker. You remember right at the beginning I said the DDE thing, which is doing the Doppler shift correction from uh, WX Track. So as long as you've got all that hooked up. You can get preamplifiers. Um, New Elect do this little thing called the Sawbird. Um, it's about 50 quid, 45 quid. Um, it's not necessary. Um, if you've got a weaker antenna, it'll help. Uh, but as we'll see, um, you, can, you can get away without it. Um, OK, so there's the, um, this, uh, this guy's published this thing about making a um, a coat hanger antenna, a horizontal V, chocolate block coax, <laughs> chocolate block. Um, and it does work. Uh, at EMF camp this year, um, a guy came up to me and said, oh, I've heard this can be done. I've made this thing. Um, he just basically had got a coat hanger and he made it and he wanted to try it. Um, and uh, so we put it up on the, uh, on, on the, the top of the mast on our van. And that's what he got, um, and literally five minutes' work, um, which is now all the clouds here are actual real data from the sky, and this program WX Track then will fill in the outlines, and it'll everything inside it'll make green, and everything outside it'll make blue. So the and the country boundaries, of course, there. So um, it's a little bit false imaged. But 
all the uh, the cloud patterns that you're seeing there are actually live from the satellite as we decoded them. So uh, that was just with that homebrew thing with the uh, the, the uh, chocolate block. So that's what you can do to start with. Um, that's with the white stick. As you can see, it was a good pass. It went straight overhead, and you've got this dropout right overhead. But you can see I'm getting a lot of good signal. Um, and that's the blue SDR. It's not even the, uh, the silver one, just the white stick on the roof. Um, I mentioned turnstiles. Uh, they're quite easy to make. It's difficult to find good instructions online, but I'm sure they're there. I'm sure if you dig around, you can find such a thing. But again, this is a vertical post with a couple of crossed horizontals on it. Um, with a bit of fiddling, you can be done for free, I'm sure. Um, and uh, this guy's come up with this uh, thing, which uh, a double cross antenna, which I'd not heard of before, but it, it's a ver sort of a cross between this sort of thing and the, and the turnstile. Um, and uh, apparently works uh, extremely well, and there is good detailed instructions for making that. And as you can see, it's, it's just made out of uh, plastic pipe and a few, uh, um, a few bits of uh, wire. Um, that's the thing we just looked at, if, if you need it. And uh, if you use a QFH like this, uh, that was one I took um, three months ago. And as you can see, it's almost pixel perfect. And that's without that Sawbird uh, amplifier. It's just one of these on a stand um, and uh, the blue SDR. And that's it. How to do satellites on a budget. Right. Thank you, Heather. Does anyone have any questions? That's a slice, say. M0SPV, yes, I've only got a bow thing at four about 70 centimetres and I've got a, a mobile a 70 centimetre transceiver without spending any more money. I just want to put something basic together to basically get satellites on FM. Is, uh, is that hard to do or is that quite easy? So the, with this sort of antenna, um, if you've, do you say you've only got 70 centimetres or have you got two metres as well? Um, yeah, so, so if you've got two meters as well, um, obviously this type of antenna, you can have two separate feeds and go into two radios, and then that'll get you onto the, the voice satellites. Um, if you're receiving on two meters, the weather satellites are on 137, so um, if it's a commercial amateur radio, it might not go down there, but the blue dongles will get you on there for, for free. Um, or a few pounds, um, and again, the the um, you don't need to worry about positioning of these things. The ISS stuff comes down on two meters in the two meter band, um, and as, as I said again, if, if you can just put your microphone to your phone um, and receive the ISS pictures that way. So uh, all, all of that you can do with just having a two meter receive, um, and uh, if you want to go up and down the two meter transceiver with so many times, yeah. Okay, anybody else? Yes, sir. Yeah, thanks, uh, Peter, M0 PhD. Um, you're given a lot of references, actually. Sorry, the is falling apart. The sky yeah. is falling down, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you give a lot of references for, for websites and various bits and pieces, actually. Would you have a list of... Uh, could you summarize that uh, on, on a list on a piece of paper or could we get a hold of it somewhere? Um, I, I think that, the, well, the talk is going to be available sometime, is it? No? Sorry? The talk will be available, so uh, yeah. the, the question is about getting access to the... Yeah. Uh, it'll be on YouTube. It'll be on YouTube, there you yeah. go. So, yeah, so you should be able to get it all from there. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm M5DWI. I've been looking in the, the most recent two um, editions of RADCOM 
and there are some antennas that look like moxons, but two side by side for each band, uh, pointing skywards to give an omnidirectional pattern. Have you had an experience of how effective they are? Um, yeah, the 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 um, the last. I think the last. We've got to go. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, you were running time. Uh, the the last edition of Radcom, I think, had something about the meteor beacon, uh, which had has cross moxon. Um, it works very well. Yeah, works very very well. Um, the obviously the advantage of a moxon is again it's very very easy to build. Um, plenty of things on uh, there's a program called MoxGen you can run to give you all the dimensions. Um, not quite as good as uh, the multi-element Yagi's, um, but uh, yeah, perfectly adequate for this kind of thing um, if you if you want to. And again, they're, they're directional and they're polarized as well, so you. With a bit of fiddling, you can actually make it uh, rotatable uh, like that one. Well, the, the, the ones that are described, there are two right angles to each other, and they're fed to give circular yep. polarization, so it, yep. it should cover the, the bases. Yep, yep, should do fine. Yep, you might need to do a bit of switching if you want linear polarization. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> okay, I think we've kind of just about run out of time, I'm afraid. Um, but, um, you know, I know Heather will be around for a little while. Yeah, I'll be here for a few more minutes. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, so feel free. Um, we do have a break now, I believe until 10.45, um, when we have um, a uh, discussion about more data from space. With that, thank you, everybody. <laughs>